Elixit Lisa Berry is one of the most pure fun roller coasters in the world. This mock multi-launch coaster not only features a diverse set of elements, but it also has a special setting. The ride carves its way along a busy hillside perched atop a city. This results in some truly stunning visuals. So in this video, I will explain why this may be Mach's best roller coaster. Mach debuted their launch coaster in 2009 with Blue Fire Europa Park. This ride was praised for its smooth tracking, comfortable trains, and varied ride elements. This particular layout was so successful it has been cloned 10 times. But Mach can also make custom launch coasters, and their most ambitious has to be Helix. This is not only their longest launch coaster, but it also features an epic location. Lisa Berry may be in downtown Gothenburg, but half the park is located on a nine-story tall hill, and this hill is densely populated with trees, pathways, and rides. The park and Mach somehow found a way to squeeze Helix onto this hill, and the end result is incredible. The green track and supports blend in beautifully with the trees. Then the track winds every which way. This ride adds so much energy to the park. From the lower levels, you can see the taller elements poking above the trees. Then from the upper pathways, the coaster has a lot of close calls. This results in some of the best on-ride visuals of any coaster. The presentation does not stop there. This pre-boarding experience is highly stylized. The ride has a futuristic industrial vibe to it. The queue lies a mesmerizing mess of multi-level pathways. It's nearly impossible to tell where you're going next, as it crosses over and under itself. I know some find this a bit ugly, but I like the look of the labyrinth. Then it also has a bit of a dance club vibe because of the ride's epic soundtrack. This may be the best soundtrack for any ride out there. It's pumping and bombastic. It is uber catchy and it blasts through both the queue line station. If you've never heard this soundtrack, stop what you're doing and go look it up. It's amazing. Helix's queue line station is located atop a Lisa Berry Hill in this indoor plaza. It is shared with the atmosphere drop tower. To access it, you can either walk up the entirety of the hill, or the park conveniently offers two escalators to take you right up to the ride. This is probably the most popular ride at Lisa Berry, and understandably, it often has the longest line at the park. The ride has pretty good capacity to be honest, as it routinely runs three trains. I saw them do this even on a rainy day at the park when it was absolutely dead. Each train holds a max of 20 riders, as it's comprised of five cars, and each car is two rows of two. And the crew does a good job getting the trains out fast. You almost always see at least one train cycling the layout at all times. The lengthy queues are a symptom of the ride's popularity, so how should you tour this ride and minimize your weights? There are two best ways to do this. First, head here immediately after the park opens. While many people head here early, you can usually get a quick ride or two with a minimal weight if you go there absolutely first. Second, utilize the park's highly effective and free virtual queue system. You can book return times on the park's app for several rides, including Helix. You can book one attraction at a time, you get a 10 minute return window to get back to the ride, and you will be greeted with no more than a 5 minute wait upon entry. Return times for Helix go the fastest, but keep checking as more are constantly added throughout the day. It's also worth knowing that Helix is an amazing night ride. It is magical alternating between the dark hillside and then seeing the spectacular lights of the rides and city down below. It's one of the best night rides out there. However, Lisa Berry will close Helix's queue line so the last train goes out right at closing time. This can make it tricky to get a night ride in the summer months when it doesn't usually get dark until the very end of the day. Therefore, you need to monitor the day's crowds and enter the queue line before they close it off. If you want a stress-free way to get a night ride, snag one of the latest virtual queue times for the coaster. Even if the standby line closes, they will still honor your virtual queue time as long as you had one pre-booked. The station is usually quite congested, but you are allowed to select any row of your choice. There isn't a bad seat in this ride, but I strongly recommend trying both the front and back. The front offers the unobstructed views, while the back has an extra airtime moment or two. These trains are also highly comfortable. They have raised seating, meaning the feet of most riders will dangle in the air. Then the overhead lap bars are snug and ergonomic. They will come down tightly, whether it be from the operator pressing down or the ride's positive G's, but I don't have an issue with the restraints. 
they never become uncomfortable, and it's still plenty possible to appreciate this ride's wonderful forces. Once dispatched, you immediately have a decent sized dropout of the station. Remember, you start at one of the ride's highest points. In this drop offers some weak ejector airtime if you're in the back car. It catches a lot of riders off guard. Next comes a super slow corkscrew. This offers fantastic hang time. The world seems to stand still as you hang upside down. As you twist downwards, you get treated to some okay positive G's and also a bit of a rattle. Helix overall is extremely comfortable, but there are a few spots that have a bit of a rattle to them. It's not a big issue for me, but it is present if you are sensitive to that. You then head around a fun turn surrounded by trees and head towards launch one. This feels odd to say, but the weakest part of this multi-launch coaster is ironically the launches. Mock coasters are notorious for having mild launches, and Helix may be the poster child for that. Both launches have no punch to them. The LSMs build up plenty of speed, but there's absolutely no yank to them. It's too smooth for its own good. After launch one, you have this wonderful zero-g roll over an escalator. It's a really cool visual, and the element has oodles of hang time. It's especially sweet up front because you're pushed forwards over the restraint while levitating. This float is perfectly juxtaposed by a forceful pullout that twists left. You then go over this S-hill. This is one of several hills on Helix offering a breathtaking view of Gothenburg down below. This hill also offers decent sustained floater airtime, particularly in the back because the resultant drop goes way down the hill, and this directional change is also paired with some laterals. The pullout again pummels riders with good positive Gs, then comes the most intense sequence on the ride, the pretzel loop. It starts with a dive loop. The front is really pushed into the element. Meanwhile, those in back get an itty bitty pop of airtime at the apex while inverted. Then everyone is blasted with great positive Gs in the subsequent valley. Helix pulls nearly 4.5 Gs, and I suspect this is where it occurs. This is immediately followed by an Immelman. This maintains the positive Gs as you climb upwards, and the twist out of it is quick with some snap. You get a reprieve from the positives with a camelback. This hill offers great sustained ejector airtime, especially because it sneaks up on you after the ultra disorienting inversions. You can't really see it coming. This is then followed by the second zero G roll, and this one is even wilder than the first. It's faster and tighter. You get so much whip on the flip. The train is bucked into it, which causes you to keep on being thrusted forwards. It's not the least bit uncomfortable. Rather, it feels like Helix is forcing you to bow repeatedly. Helix then has a Helix, the only one in the entire ride. The entry into it is incredible. You slightly hop upwards and have this super snappy twist left. It offers a quick ejector pop combined with strong laterals. It feels more like a transition you'd get on an Intamin. The twist continues downwards, narrowly avoiding trees and Lisa Berry Banan. The low point of the Helix has robust positive Gs, you then climb upwards. Helix loses a lot of speed here, but the visuals compensate. You have this ultra-tight turn beneath the flume and into a shed. I have no clue how this part passed clearance testing. I swear you could hit the walls if you tried. This conceals what comes next. Launch 2. Now unfortunately, this is as forceless as the first, which is surprising because it's noticeably uphill, but it does have two things going for it. One. You do feel the ride build up a lot of speed, albeit very gradually. Two, it builds anticipation as you see the inverted top hat in front of you. This inversion is the ride's highest point, taking you to heights of 135 feet or 41 meters. Everyone gets a brief but great view of the apex, along with some light hang time. Then you are pulled downwards. The twist out of it is disorienting, and it also offers a surprise airtime pop, albeit a small one for those in back. After narrowly avoiding the SNS scream and swing, you fly over my favorite part of the ride, the second camelback. This one's considerably taller and more forceful than the first one. This offers the single best view in the ride as you're staring down at the city, this time from greater heights. Then the airtime is spectacular. Balder, the park's Intamin prefab, is famous for its ejector airtime, but this single hill on Helix is better than any hill on Balder. In fact, it's one of the best airtime moments in the world. The views combined with the very strong and super sustained ejector airtime is truly world class. 
the pullout is another forceful one, and it often causes me to start graying out. It also twists you left. The train then climbs back up the hill via a series of S-bends. This bleeds off a lot of speed, but the side-to-side -side motion offers some light laterals at least. The final turn at the top is quite tight, offering some laterals. It turns right around a tree, and it brings you face to face with the ride's seventh and final inversion, an inline twist, and I think it's the ride's single best inversion. It offers copious amounts of hang time. It feels like a slightly faster JoJo roll. I love when rides creatively use their loss of speed to their advantage like this. You then hit the brakes and return to the station, ending the 4,531 foot or 1,381 meter long coaster. In terms of pacing, Helix is darn near perfect. In the few spots where you lose speed, the ride either throws great visuals or a maneuver that's better with less velocity. So what would I rate Helix? I would give this coaster a 9.5 out of 10. This is one of my favorite coasters anywhere. The setting plays a major role. It is so addictively fun winding along the hill. The sight lines between the city, rides, and trees are special. Then the elements are excellent too. I love how it constantly switches between floaty inversions, good positive Gs, and powerful negative Gs. You have several airtime spots, including one of my favorite camelbacks out there. And all seven inversions are wonderful. They all feel different from each other, yet consistently lift you out of your seat. The only real con with this ride is the lackluster launches. They're over quickly, so they don't kill the pacing. They're just a minor buzzkill because the ride does everything else so well. Again, it's ironic a launch coaster is weak in the launch department. That setting works wonders for this coaster. So those are my thoughts on Helix at Lisa Berry, the world-class launch coaster. Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.